What's going on, you guys? This is Marco Rosas reporting for Fresno State Favorites. I wanted to find out what are Fresno State students' favorite place to eat off campus. So, I think the best way I knew how, by setting up a camera. How's it going? Being incredibly charming and popping the question. Oh my god! <laughs> I like Subway. Um, because I like sandwiches. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Janice Tatum. And I'm Adjua Aikens. I was personally a victim of this just last night. Somebody busted my car window open. And if you need to take a break, there's plenty of shaded benches along the way. This past semester, I've been coming here for physical therapy to get stronger with my knees. Just put your hand right by your face and then you're gonna turn your hand all the way over and hit right in the middle of the pad. So this will be your cross, this is number two. Cool. So from right there, hit right in the middle, yep, and then back to your face. Victor E. the third will officially pass his collar to Victory the fourth, who is here with us right now. This is something special. Even though the rain has stopped, we're still in the green, still perfect weather to go out and smell the roses. I kinda just wanna sit down and enjoy that corn dog I never got a chance to finish eating. From Bulldog Stadium, Gabe Camarillo, Fresno State Focus. From the Student Health Center, Janice Tatum for Fresno State Focus. And back to you in the studio live at Chukansi Park, Fresno State Focus. I'm Karina Guevara. This is Athena Clayton, live from the Fresno State Aquatic Center for Fresno State Focus. I want you all to meet Remy. He is a 13-month male Labrador Golden Retriever and Harley Mix. Something special about Remy is that he is deaf. Let me show you how his foster mom has changed his whole pup life. I just said no more. I can't stand by and not do anything. I, even if it's just me, myself, I had to move forward and, and help. And that's when I started fostering. Lupi Ramirez is a Ridley native and has been a foster volunteer since 2016. Remy was part of the first litter she ever fostered. Each pup, including mom and Remy, was adopted. Around two months ago, Remy returned due to the previous owner finding out he was deaf. I'm trying to save a life here. I'm trying to do something and make a difference. Being deaf hasn't stopped Remy from living his pup life. One way Ramirez is able to communicate with Remy is by using sign language. Just like potty training, learning sign language for dogs takes patience, practice, and a lot of consistency. Remy is just like any other dog. One of his favorite things to do is following shadows. It's amazing to see how they're just so thankful. I mean, they blossom. They, you know, the first few days is difficult, but afterwards they just seem to have their own, um, their personalities come out. They're just happy dogs. And to think that they would not have had that is, um, is really saddening. The Labrador Retrieve Rescue Fresno will be on campus tomorrow from 10.30 to 1.30 p.m. Make sure you go in front of the bookstore to join them and find out all there is to know about Labradors and the organization. In Ridley, Brianna Lemus, Fresno State Focus. Mental illness is something that comes in different forms and can affect anybody. Here at Fresno State, there are places to get help. Carl Cook is at the Health and Counseling Center to talk more about this certain type of mental illness. Carl? Thanks, Noah. Anxiety, bipolar, and obsessive compulsive disorder are a few examples of mental illnesses that students deal with on a daily basis. When it comes to depression, it can be just a little bit more difficult to talk about, just like in the case of this young lady. Every day, someone you know could be dealing with depression. According to a 2020 report from the National Institute of Mental Health, nearly 8.5% of all U.S. adults had at least one major depressive moment in their life. According to the research, this happens more often to women 18 to 25 years old. Harley Martin can relate to these statistics. One day I'll get up and I'll have a good day, school and everything, and the next day I'm like, I just want to be in bed all day. I don't want to talk to nobody because it's like it drains your energy to talk to people or to clean your room or to get up and like do even the simplest thing. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. But her family can relate to this. Harley's mother and other siblings also live with depression since it can be hereditary. As good as it does feel to know that I'm not alone and that I I, I know people that suffer from it as well. It's harder, I feel like, to relate to, um, especially my sister, Harley, because 
she's not very vocal and I'm not very vocal and we don't talk about, you know, what's going on with each other. These moments of holding back is something doctors say we should not do. Staying in the dark. School psychiatrist Nancy Lee has advice on ways to find some light and be there for one another. Being there for somebody who is going through something emotional, whether it's depression or another uh, mental health disorder, um, that is the best thing that someone can do for others. Just Harley hopes those who live with depression follow that recommendation. A lot of people around you, I think, are probably going through it too, you know? but they're just not talking about it. If you talk about it and you are posting things like social media, post things and I'm sure people will text you. I've done it before and people have texted me that they go through the same thing. It's not something to be embarrassed about. Just like the center behind me, there are resources available if you or someone you know deals with depression or any other form of mental illness. Here at the Student Health and Counseling Center, I'm Carl Cook, Fresno State Focus. This is a medicine dance of the Southern Sierra Miwok Nation. Every time you hear that drum beat and it hits really hard, um, and you see the dancers raise their fan, it's just giving a blessing for whatever you're dancing for. Today, many dance to keep tradition and culture alive. The jingle part is actually the cover of tobacco lids rolled up and um, turning it into dance and song is like reclaiming the culture cultural ways that were stolen from us right now i'm standing in yosemite national park where less than a lifetime ago many native families were forced from their homes and still today over 50 years later many tribes are still looking for recognition including the southern sierra miwok nation they're saying that we are a modern distinct community and, I mean, if you look here today, that's a pretty ridiculous claim. A lack of federal recognition prevents the tribe from accessing several programs, making it increasingly difficult to preserve their culture and gain official acknowledgement. The tribe is over 800 members, um, but a lot of them have had to move away because the, their needs aren't getting met here. In Mariposa, Miranda Adams, Fresno State Focus. It may be sunny now, but there is a long dark cloud over the San Joaquin Valley. The opioid epidemic has a hold on the nation and the Central Valley. Your best friend, your coworker, your teammate could be someone who's struggling with addiction. Eric Ozetta is an opioid survivor who has been sober for six years. They internalize a lot of stuff and they isolate themselves. And when you isolate yourself, it's kind of a, it's not a recipe for success. Now getting high can be a game of Russian roulette. In 2021, emergency services responded to 84 fentanyl overdoses in Fresno. 34 of them ended in death. A place people can receive help is the nonprofit Pain. PAIN stands for Parents and Addicts in Need. The nonprofit offers supports for addicts and their families as well. Flint Anderson started PAIN and he says being an addict is more dangerous than ever. Especially with the fentanyl crisis, they don't know what they're getting. Uh, there's no way to determine what is in either that, that pill or if they're using cocaine and a drug dealer has laced it with fentanyl or they're getting just straight fentanyl and they think they're getting cocaine. Pain has helped over 3,000 addicts since 2009. Anderson says 93% of Pain's clientele went to a Clovis Unified school. Starting first baseman, they have to be first chair trumpet in the band. They have to be, you know, straight A students. And most of these kids are just that, they're kids. Frankie DePrima was not an addict. He was a fun-loving jokester who loved his mom. Hello. His girlfriend and his car. He was a 20 year old who sometimes experimented with drugs. Frankie died from a fentanyl overdose two years ago. Up like all night long playing Xbox and um, and then they would sleep all day, him and his friends. 
And so it was nothing unusual for him not to come out of his room. But the day went by, and Elaine started to get worried when she hadn't seen or heard from him by 6 p.m. I went to his door, and it was locked, and I went and got the key, and I opened it up, and I could tell that um, he'd been gone for a long time. Frankie had six times the lethal amount of fentanyl in his system. You know, when they see me, I want them to think about if their parents were having to go through this, because no parent should have to find their child dead in their room. I spoke with Clovis Unified's Chief Communication Officer, Kelly A. Vance. She told me Clovis Unified has done many things to students and parents to make them more aware of the dangers of fentanyl. She said that there's a lot of power in awareness and an engaged parent. It's not often that students get to play with toys while in the class, but for one special classroom on campus, that's exactly what happens. Viviana Hinojo shows us how up-and-coming elementary school teachers are learning how to teach with puppets. Fresno State students with dreams of one day having a classroom of their own are learning how to incorporate puppetry into their lesson plans. One, two, three, four. Ha <laughs> ha, you see that? That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> Some had mixed emotions at the start of the semester, not knowing what to expect. Before, I had a lot of skepticism. He was like, what are you going to do in a puppet class? But after the first day, like, just the whole thing is just so fun. Dr. Nicola Olson is a new professor at Fresno State with a background in theater education. She works with liberal studies majors who want to become elementary school teachers. She says one of the most rewarding parts of the job is seeing the creativity students bring to class. They just got these abilities to... I don't know, take a sock and bring it to life with googly eyes and, and a really long tongue and have a lispy voice, right? That is just delightful. The puppetry class is a service learning course which lets students take what they have learned in class and apply it in their community. I know you're out here with the Fresno State students from your class. Mm -hmm. It's a very exciting event and I see you brought yeah. someone with you. I do. I do. I, 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 my friend from space. Oh. This is, come here. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hello! Wow, this is squirt! Inside the Betty Rodriguez Library last week, many other puppetry friends and snacks were waiting for kids to come by and make a puppet. Fresno State students helped teach those who stopped by. I think it's a great opportunity for them to get a hands-on, you know, to, especially because there's a lot of kids here. Kids enjoyed taking photos with their puppets and also got to see a puppet show put on by Fresno State students. At Fresno State, Viviana Hinojos, Fresno State Focus.